Hey guys, it's Mike from Indie Development, and we're going to look at how to make a simple matching game using C Sharp and Windows Forms, but we will not be using the uh, designer view this time to make our game. Uh, I think this might be something that some of you guys are looking for on how you can set up labels and do different things, you know, timers and whatnot um, from just within the CS code itself and not actually using the toolbox and the designer to pull stuff out and put it on there that way. So, this will be a, a good experience to show you guys what actually the uh, designer is doing for you in the background. You know, how it puts labels on things, how it resizes and stuff like that. So the first thing we're going to do is actually, uh, you can do this on like pen and paper or however you want to do it, but I'm going to do it so you guys can see it and go along with me here. Um, let's say that this right here is our, our window that we're going to have. And it's going to have a bunch of different things that we have to set. And the way we're going to do this is I'm actually going to not create a full finished game. It's going to be a, a full game that actually works, you know. But I want to leave you guys with something that you can easily, you know, modify and make, make it into your own th type of game. So uh, when you're looking at the form itself, there's going to be a lot of things that we have to put into, into effect. Especially the way we're going to do this with it dynamically resizing as we go along. Um, we're going to have to do a bunch of things, so like, uh, say inside the form itself, we'll have to actually um, keep up with, uh, say, the form width, as well as uh, form height. Those are going to be two things that are going to change and we're going to, have to pass that in for the form each time the board's made. Um, some other things that we're going to, have to keep track of. Uh, let's go ahead and lay out the labels and stuff and then we'll go over what each one's going to take. Uh, this part of the, of the tutorial is actually just going to be uh, you know, the pre-work for it so we're ready to go and hit the ground uh, for the next one. So let's say you have... Well, this is red I guess. We're going to have some game pieces and they're going to be 45 by 45. So they're going to look something like that. Now these game pieces are actually going to be uh, what the user can click on and it's going to show something then they're going to try to match by clicking on another one. And if they do match these two are going to disappear and be removed from the, the form. And if they don't they're going to be delayed for a little while so you can see both on what what's on each piece and then that way you can kind of put in memory you know what this one is and what this one is and then you can start selecting again so we're going to start out with just a simple um, two row two column board like this and of course they're going to be evenly spaced and all that um, by a vertical spacer and a horizontal spacer once we get the game going now on top of this we're going to actually have um, we'll put a title label up here that's going to hold our game title and then out to the side we're going to have uh, a couple of labels one for uh, how many attempts are left before the game is over and one for how many matches you've got correct so far so this is going to be kind of our initial board and the actual uh, form itself will automatically size to this so it's not too big or not too small so this is what we're going to be looking at starting off with. Now another thing that comes along with that is we need to make a label that is going to automatically detect how wide and how this is. It's going to overlay this and what it's going to say is simply you know you win or you lose. But this is going to be set you know to invisible until after uh, either the number of attempts have hit zero or you've got them all correct. So that'll be something to keep in mind for later. So if we look at these, uh, we're about to have the form width and form height. We know for sure. And this is going to be used in both sizing the form and sizing these labels here. Uh, some other stuff we're going to have to keep track of is we're going to have to have margins. And I'm going to use the same size for each of my margins, but I'm going to actually put it in. Uh, when we program as 
left, right, top, and bottom in case you guys want to use some different numbers. You don't have to come go back in and, and alter anything for that. So we'll do a left margin, uh, right margin, top margin, and bottom margin. So these will be the four margins here. Now along with that, we're going to have to keep a, a vertical spacer and a horizontal spacer. And what this is going to be used for is between the pieces, you know, um, like right, I'll just make a little box here, different color, black work. So this right here would be your vertical spacer. And this right here would be your horizontal spacer. And that just lets you space out the pieces so they're not right on top of each other. Um, and we're going to, I'm just going to use 25 for each of these. But like I said, um, you could just make this one margin instead of all four them separate if you're going to use the same size. But just in case you want to do something different, that's fine. I'll leave that there. And of course, if you're going to use the same space for a vertical and horizontal, you could just make that into a spacer. But in case you guys want different spaces between different whatever, so we'll just go ahead and make these all separate. These right here are going to be automatically set depending on the board size. These right here will always be this this size. Another thing that we could keep track of here is the piece width. So the pieces are going to be 45 by 45. And that is probably going to be, for the most part, um, what we do with, with actually the layout part. Um, now a lot of it's going to come into play, like you're going to have to actually, when you set these labels where their locations is going to be, uh, you're going to have to look at, you know, how far over you want it, add in the left margin, stuff like that. And another thing is like when you're automatically generating the form size, like you're going to have to add the left margin and then you're going to have to get how many of these pieces right here are on the board. And for each piece on the board, you're going to have to add into a, uh, a vertical spacer. And you're going to have to times that piece width and vertical spacer width times how many pieces or how many columns are on the board. And that will shoot it over across through here. Then you're going to have to take into account to this, how big this is, or how wide that is. And then you're going to have to put it into the right margin as well. And that will automatically size the form to the width you need and then the height of course is the top bottom margin the height of this you know and all that the pieces and the piece height and the uh, spacer height and all that will give you the, the height so you'll see how I do that uh, in the later tutorials so these are going to be our main game pieces here and another thing I want to show you guys for when we get started is if you go down to your start menu and you go and type C H A R M A P for a character map. And you open that up uh, and, and you click on this drop down here and go down to Wingdings. You'll see that instead of images, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to actually use Wingdings font onto a label since they look like images anyway. And I learned that uh, this little trick from a professor at the college when we made a little, little game before. Um, you can use these right here for your images and it's a lot easier you don't have to go out and create anything or whatever so what we're going to do is we're going to pick a range so um, Windows 7 calculator I'm not sure if the other versions have this or not um, is really really neat for doing this right here because if you go down and open your calculator up alright so you're usually you're going to be in standard so if you click view and go down to programmer now these right here are in you know if you can know how to convert hex to decimal that's fine but if you don't this right here makes it really simple so we're going to need a range on this to go by and we'll start with the pencil here which is uh, you see the 21 here so make sure you got hex selected put in 21 all you gotta do now is click decimal that's going to give you what that is so 33 so when we we use this in the code for the range the initial is going to be like the 33 here and we'll go all the way to, I don't know, we don't need to use a whole bunch of them. I mean, you guys can go as far with it as you want, but I'll go here. So that is a 58. So if we go up to hex, 58, and click on decimal, that'll be 88. 
So that's how we're going to get our range. It's going to be 33 to 88. And what we're going to do then is use a random number for incrementation. So like, say we, or this piece right here gets set. Now we want to get the next piece. Now we'll set two pieces of the same one, but now we need to choose another piece for the, the next uh, pair. And our, the random generates, say, a four. So you'll go from uh, the scissor here and you'll go four over. One, two, three, four. And now you've got this one. So this will be a, a, another set of pieces. So now I'd say the random generates a five. One, two, three, four, five. You know, you get a mailbox. But say you start here at this cross and it rolls a five. You know, one, two, oh, we hit the end. So now we have to make sure that any time that it is, um, that is 88 and it increments again, it needs to go back to 33. So we were right here, it goes one, two, three, four, five. So then this one will be another pair. Now you can get duplicate um, images this way or characters, whatever you want to call them. That's fine because um, what will happen is there will always be two of each kind. So if you had, if this lands on two of them, then there will be four on the board. So you can, you know, you can still clear them all off. It's not a big deal. Now one thing you will run into, there is a blank space somewhere between this range of 33 to 88. It's blank and prints no character. Uh, so when you click on it, it will be like an invisible piece but there'll also be another invisible piece on the board that you can clear so that you know it's not a, a, a real big deal so that's how we're going to get our um, our matching pieces is just through this right here and you know some of these are actually kind of complicated if you actually get in here and look at them like the mailboxes here ones like that you know one like that one like that so I mean you know it, it kind of messes with you sometimes when you when you're trying to find this one and you're always looking for you know hit that one or whatever so I mean, it's, it's it's actually a little bit of a challenging game, and I'll be really interested to see where you guys go with it after the tutorial. When you finish out your own copy of it, you know, let me know, you know, what kind of improvements and enhancements you made. But uh, that's what we're going to do in this series, and um, the next part of the tutorial, we'll actually go ahead and and start up the the coding process, and uh, I will see you guys then.